Hello, Kim Townsville here. Today's video will show you an adaptation of my family's chili recipe. It's a pretty basic chili recipe. I made a few changes to make it a little bit healthier and possibly a little bit easier. But it's the basic ingredients are I'm using three pounds of ground turkey. I'm substituting that for ground beef. I'm using one pound of ground sausage. And I'm having to use the Great Value brand because it was the only uh, brand in the store that didn't have MSG in it. In the past, I've had some allergic reactions to MSG, and frankly, it's not worth finding out if I'm still uh, allergic to MSG or not, so I'm going to use this. I hope it turns out okay. Uh, the one concession I made for not being, um, I guess, easier is I'm, I will use this onion, and Dixon, I got the smallest sweet yellow onion that they had, but I'll be cutting this up and putting all this in the recipe. I don't mind cutting up garlic, but I saw this and I thought, well, I'll just try this. This is going to be hitting the easy button, and most people uh, would probably prefer to use the garlic like this. So I'll use some of this, and we'll see how that, that turns out. I got the Great Value brand chili pepper, which is also a cheat because it has all of the little um, various flavors that people put into chili, and this is all combined in one. I'm using uh, this the Del Monte diced tomatoes that has the zesty chili seasoning in there. I've used this in the past and had really good luck with it, so I'll just, I'm just using that again, I'm using four cans of that. If you don't like this, you can substitute Rotel, any type of diced tomatoes that you like. You can do as I've done in past videos and cut up probably six to seven or eight tomatoes from scratch and put those in there, basically any, any type that you want. You just need enough tomatoes and water to cover the, the meat and the beans. And instead of buying the dry beans and um, rehydrating those, I'm doing the big cheat and going with the prepared beans. I'm using the bush chili beans, and I got the kind with the hot sauce in it because it just has like a little little spicy flavor to it. I like my, my chili pretty hot, but we'll see because I'm actually preparing this to take to, um, to a, a football party tomorrow. And I'm going to try these. My friend Rachel was the one that, that told me about these. I'm preparing this chili to take to Rachel and Brandon's house tomorrow. This is going to make it easier for us to clean up when I get ready to leave. And if I want to leave the leftovers with them, they can uh, pull it out and put it into a container. I've never used these before because I've never been able to find them. But I found them in the store today, so I'll be trying this this uh, new today as well. I got the Chobani Greek yogurt for uh, to substitute for sour cream for many reasons. One, because this is cheaper than sour cream. Two, it provides more protein per serving than sour cream. And three, it provides less fat than sour cream. And when you put it in something like um, chili, something like that, you can't taste the difference in the sour cream, uh, or the difference between the sour cream and the Greek yogurt. I have a taste test up where I tried three different types of um, plain Greek yogurt, and the Chobani was the winner that tastes more like sour cream than the other two brands that, uh, that I tested. So I'll start uh, putting this together and take some photos for you and maybe take some video while it's cooking and we'll see how it, how it goes over. This is the actual recipe that I copied years and years and years ago. This is the basic. I made the substitution of using the turkey instead of the ground beef. I'm using a pound of sausage. Again, the garlic in the container and the yellow onion, the chili powder seasoning. I use the pre prepared bush beans and four cans of the Del Monte diced tomatoes. I just cut the onions up in uh, small bite-sized pieces. I saute the onions with the sausage because those uh, cook very well together. This is how the liner goes into the crock pot. I just use that much garlic and cut it up. They're kind of slimy but not too bad. It's very convenient. Cut them up in fairly large pieces. I used three tablespoons of the chili powder and I originally added only one tablespoon of Bisquick and one, not, uh, not quite a full tablespoon of salt. I ended up actually adding more flour but I'll show you that later. Once the sausage and onions are browned, you can add those to the crock pot. Then begin cooking the ground beef or the ground turkey. You can cook the turkey or the ground beef as long as you like. Some people like to cook it just to get the pink off. I like to cook it until the moisture is gone and all that's left is a little bit of fat. I then brown the meat in that fat because I like the flavor that it brings. There's actually a chemical reaction that, that occurs 
and I like the flavor of the meat when it gets that, that browning. Once that gets done, you can add it to the hot pot. Instead of adding the seasoning to the meat while it's still in the electric skillet or the frying pan, add it once it gets in the crock pot because otherwise some of the seasoning is going to stay in the skillet and that's not where you want the seasoning. You want all of it on the meat. I'll pour the seasoning on the turkey or the ground beef because that's the least seasoned. You can hardly see because of the steam coming up in here. Once you get that all stirred together, then you can start adding the tomatoes and the beans. I'm actually cooking the meat and the onion and the garlic and the sausage and the spices the night before I'm going to cook the chili and I wrapped it up in this bag. I'm going to set the crock pot part in the refrigerator and in the morning I will add my tomatoes and beans and I know I'll have to cook it for probably an extra hour because this is going to start off cold. But it's going to be easier than getting up in the morning and having to do all the meat part. In the morning, I washed off the top of the cans, opened them up, poured the beans and the tomatoes in on top of the meat, stirred it up, added a little bit of water to the cans to get the remaining product out, cut the crock pot on high, and let it cook. This is after two and a half hours. Looking good. I actually wanted it a little bit thicker, so I sifted in two more tablespoons of Bisquick and that was the result. This is what a bowl of this chili looked like. And I guess everybody liked it because there was only two servings left at the end of a New Year's Day. This is what the bag liner looked like. It looked like it burnt on the inside, but it was just a little kind of crunchy. And so I moved all the product to one side, cut an, a hole in the other side, poured it into a container to get that last little bit of chili out. This is what the pan looks like. I will have to wash it, but I won't have to scrub it. Thank you for watching a version of Rooney's Chili. Rooney's my mom. It was, um, I guess, a big hit. At least people ate most of it, as you can see. We enjoyed having that for the New Year's Eve celebration at Rachel and Brandon's, and then the leftovers today at my house for small plates for beans and greens for New Year's Day. Hope the 2017 is everything you want it to be. Feel free to like the video, share the video, subscribe to my channel. Everything's organized in playlists. See you next time. Bye.